Welcome to the week one edition of Catamount Football for the 2013 season. I'm Bill Mayo, your host, and on this week's show, we're going to take a look back at the Ringgold game, have an interview with a coach and a couple of the players, and also a look ahead at the upcoming game with Calhoun. So stay right here, we're back with more Catamount Football after these messages. Hi, my name is Charles R. Hicks Sr. I'm the owner of AAA Transformers Transmission and Complete All Repair. This is my son, CJ. You all know us for remanufacturing your transmission, but did you also know we are a brake, AC, and tune-up specialist? Our brakes come with a lifetime warranty on pads and shoes. So don't just trust your vehicle to anyone. Come to AAA Transformers Transmission and Complete Auto Repair. Where we can make it stop, we can make it go, we can make it shift, and we can make it cold. Check us out on our website at AAATransformers.com. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using advancedinsurancestrategies.com. Back on Catamount Football with Coach Land. Now, Coach, talk a little bit about the uh, opening game in the season with Ringgold. Certainly not the outcome we wanted, but, but sure. I think there's an old, an old adage that coaches like to say, it's never as good as you think it was or it's never as bad as you think it was. And I think after watching the film, you know, there were a lot of good things that happened no Friday doubt. night um, despite the outcome of the game. No doubt. I mean, you know, when you look at, uh, when you, when you look at the game in its totality, um, if you do separate out the pieces that you're, you're upset about, the parts you don't like, obviously there's quite a few of those. And, and you, you, you look at those and you, you see things that we're obviously going to have to work on to be a better football team. But if you kind of walk back from that and, and look at the totality of the film, you see a lot of good things too. And, you know, today in our coaches meeting, watching and, and seeing some of our combo blocks, uh, seeing some of our coverage adjustments, uh, watching some of the things that just individual play. We've got a lot to look forward to, and we've got a lot of good things that we can build on. So, you know, when I look at the film and, and coaches and staff, when we look at the film, uh, there is plenty to work on, but at the same time, there's, there's quite a few bright spots, and, uh, you know, there's some encouraging things there. And, and I, I'm sure and it always happens. I mean, you've been in that film room before. You begin to talk to these young men about plays and why they did what they do or something like that or why we might call it and and you begin to see their logic and and it makes sense right. so it's just a matter of us beginning to work through some of those things and 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 uh, just continuing to mature uh, as a football team and uh, I, I look forward to this I think it's going to be a good year for us you know so I, certainly from from a, a fan's perspective you know the the penalties that we had especially on offense, whether it was lining up incorrectly or a couple of false starts. Sure. Those are areas of concern, and, and we kind of dove into those today. When you look at um, the maturity of our skill players on offense right now, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of guys that played a lot of JV football last year and, and really getting their first dose of varsity football. So sure. we've got some work to do to get those yeah. guys, guys uh, up to speed and, and going in the right direction. Right? Well, th there was a lot of new people on that field. Yeah. First of all, there were players. You had new players on the field, and uh, you got guys that are starting for the first time. You got guys that are playing for the first time. Obviously, we had some young guys playing for the first time. Obviously, we still have some position battles. 
everybody talks about the quarterback, but we've got other positions as well that are going through some position battles. So we were looking for rhythm and we were looking for things. We also had new officials on the though. This is our first time that we've had this officials association. And uh, so, you know, we, we kind of saw a difference in their philosophy uh, as the game progressed. You saw more procedural type stuff as far as uh, offsides, more of those kind of things, and less actionable calls. You know, we didn't, you know, in the past we've had more holdings or whatever it might be. This year, no holding in the game. So, you know, like I said, it's just a matter of still, you know, first game of the season, trying to find, uh, like I said, that rhythm, trying to find the kind of the, the way the game's going to play out, the flow of the game. And uh, like I said, I, I, there, there was, I, we, we'll, you know, Coach Chapel, Coach McClurg, every coach I've ever had, that's, they've all said the same thing. You'll, 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 get, you'll improve more between game one and game two than any other two games the rest of the year. And I wouldn't I, this definitely year will not be a year of exception. Defensively, um, created a couple of turnovers sure. uh, by, by a good young player, Jordan McKinney, a couple right. of interceptions. Excellent job by him. Um, you got, defense had their hands full. I mean, the, the Dale kid from – Ring old is a Division One baseball player, Division One athlete, right. and man, he is a handful trying to tackle, isn't he? Well, you know, and and we knew coming into the game, you know, that's the dangerous threat. He has the capability to beat you with his arm, but he also has the capability to beat you with his legs. Um, we obviously, after last year, felt like that he was more of a danger to us, and based on the experience that they had coming back uh, from a passing standpoint. So obviously we, we made a, a, a point to be sure that we could take away the passing game, which I feel like we did uh, successfully. Um, uh, and, and, but with that, it also made us vulnerable to the scramble and to the run. Uh, and he's as dangerous with his legs as he is with his arm, and maybe more so. Uh, and that was where we had new guys. You know, we had basically five new guys playing on our defensive line that had never played a varsity game before at those positions. So that was unique. Um, those guys getting to see some live action and not just getting to see live action, but getting to see it against more probably. I don't know if we'll play a better quarterback this year until maybe the play-in game, depending on who we, we might draw as a, as a counterpart. So, I, yeah, I, the defense was much improved uh, from a standpoint of, you know, you get into this first game, you don't really have any film, so you're just kind of out there playing on base what you feel. Well, our coaching staff did a good job of calling the game, and on top of that, our players did an outstanding job of making some during-the-game adjustments. So very, very pleased with the defense. Although, you know, you look at the, the, the first, you know, 15 to 16 minutes of the game up in the second quarter, a lot of missed tackles, but then we began to kind of settle in our rhythm. And, you know, through the rest of the game, I, I felt like we were pretty sound in just about all of our defensive schemes. Watching their quarterback, it reminded me of uh, last year watching uh, Johnny football yeah. in that Alabama game where, sure. I mean, the, you look like they've got him hemmed up. They're going to attack him. All of a sudden, he wiggles and squirms and darts out for a bat. Yeah. And that's, that's really frustrating for well, a defense when you've got that going absolutely. on. Absolutely. And there were times that we even spied a defender on him. And he was such a gifted runner. He was able to use blocks uh, that, that were in front of him to shield him from the spy technique, which allowed him to wiggle out pretty much free. So he's a very experienced runner. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's a, a you know, a, a, a multi-year starter. So, I mean, he, and he's by far the, the best athlete on their team. Right. And that's what you do with the best athlete. You put the ball in his hands and see what he can do. Special teams, a uh, couple of good things. I mean, the kickoffs going in the end zone. Absolutely. That's, that's fantastic. And yeah. Had, had, got some work to do on the, on the extra point and field goal. Had, had, a, uh, had one blocked. Uh, had yeah. one blocked. And, and Two blocked, yeah. Got to shore up the special teams in, in a right. couple areas, right? But, again, well, that kind of shows you – Game speed and it's, yeah. it's different than simulating special teams. It is. You, you, it's, it's, to me, as a special teams coach, and that, that's on me, I, I generally handle most of the special teams. I, I think special teams is one of the hardest things to coach during practice uh, of, of all, the, the, all the phases of the game uh, because of the fact. You know, you just have a limited number of views of what a team might do, and and you know that's where we. I mean, we got a block in the game as well, throwing right. just literally throwing together something on the dirt because we knew they'd not seen what our block might be. So it, 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 it's a give and go. But uh, you know, I look for that. That was something that we've always done well here at Dalton Special Teams, and I, I think definitely in the next couple of games you're going to see us. That'll become one of the strongest points of our team. It, it, it's interesting too. I mean, we've we've had several different philosophies on practicing it. You've gone from just calling them up right in the middle of the practice, sure. trying to simulate that, get up here and get set. You know, you're tired right. And, and, right. and then 
having periods where you break it out and work on just that. Just There's that. a lot of philosophies on, on practicing and getting ready. There is. And, and, you know, if you look at what we did well the other night, what we did well was we was able to get substitutions on North Field. We didn't really have any substitution flaws except for one, and that was where Jace was at quarterback and he came off right. of the field. Uh, a coach called him off and was having a discussion, and he had to run back onto the field for because uh, he's our up back on punt. So outside of that, we didn't have any that. Well, I would attribute the fact that we have been doing that. We've been periodically throughout practice bringing up a team and and having to, you know one guy's running from over here, and right. two guys are coming from over there, and one guy's in tackling drills. I think that's good. You do, though, have to take those times where you just set aside five minutes or ten minutes or fifteen minutes and say, okay, we're just going to work on punt block or we're just going to work on kickoff return or what. So it, it's one of those things that I don't know there's a right way. I think it's a combination in order to get what you want. We were more concerned about substitutions this week than, than probably anything. And like I said, we, I, you know, we, we passed in that manner. Well, let's take a quick break. and We'll be right back with more Cater Mountain Football in just a minute. Set. Mike Jones here, and you better blitz to Carpet Express. We have three-quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last, because everybody's out to get their quarterback. Welcome back to Catamount Football. We've got our players segment th this week. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Introduce yourselves, please. I'm uh, Jake Roberts. I'm a senior and I play left tackle. I'm Lyle Durham. I'm a senior and I play linebacker. All right, guys, let's start. I want to start with a general question. Both of y'all were elected captains by your teammates. So, Jake, start with you. Tell me what that means to you to be elected a captain. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, that means my teammates have instowed a lot of responsibility in me that I have to perform and show leadership in the locker room and on the field. What do you see as the, some of the main duties of being a captain? I uh, can't let things get out of hand. No goofing around a lot. have to keep, keep okay. it strict. Make sure everyone's doing their job. Well, let me ask you the same question. What did it mean to you to be elected a captain? Um, it was just awesome because it really just means a lot like, cause I, we we've all grown up with all these kids, and just to know that they like the kids in our grade too look up to us as leaders, and that they are going to hold us accountable for what we do. Good. How about what, what do you see as some of the main duties of of being a captain? Um, uh, similar to what Jake said, and just standing out from everybody else, and just being different in a good way, and uh, showing people how to lead, so uh, other people will be captains too. Very good. Jake, let's come back to you and talk a little bit about you. You play offensive tackle mm -hmm. primarily. I mean, you can line up at guard. You can line up at center for Dalton. But talk about your role in the offensive line. I, I, one thing I've noticed, um, especially after working with you for the last four years, you, you've become a lot more vocal. And I don't mean as far as rah rah stuff. I'm talking about calling out blitzes, getting people in the right place. Talk about that, how that's developed for you. Uh, yeah, I used to be, I used to listen to the other offensive linemen tell me what to do. And now, now I'm making sure that if it's we're I've, we're not getting the backside linebacker, I gotta tell the people doubling, you know, we gotta get that or that play doesn't work. Right. And Explain how important that communication because communication is key to any position, but certainly with offensive linemen, talk about how important it is. Oh yeah, I, say if someone like wow, well, a middle linebacker is blitz in middle a gap and no one says anything and no one no one points it out, he's just gonna come up right out of the middle and blow our play up. How about some, think about the upcoming season and for you as a team, but also for you individually, what are some goals and, and expectations you have for yourself and for your team? Well, I guess as an offensive lineman, I want to grade with a 90 or above every, every game and no sacks, 
can't give up any sacks. But yeah, we won a region championship. That's, that's our first goal right now. Absolutely, those are good goals, I like those. Lyle, how about you? Talk about your play on the field. You've also become a lot more vocal. I know, get after you in practice a little bit, but you're, you do a great job out there of, of, of getting people lined up and, and really kind of quarterback the, the, those inside seven guys. Um, it's, uh, Coach Carpenter's really like told me that, I mean, Jay Rockall, he really doesn't speak that much or like say about formations or anything. So I kind of have to get everybody lined up um, the safeties pretty much handle the coverages, but I, I kind of sit there and I have to look at formations, move people, like move fronts and that kind of stuff. Check splits, check, see if lot, uh, low hat, high hat, stuff like that. How about expectations for yourself and for your team this year? Um, individual accolades, I mean, th those are awesome, but honestly, I just, I just want to win a region championship. Right, right. Got an off week this week, looking forward to, uh, uh, getting back to work and, and getting things on track, getting ready for Calhoun. Yes, sir. All right. Guys, thanks for coming on the show, and good luck with the rest of the season. We'll certainly be watching to see how y'all do. Stay right here. Back with more Catamount football in just a minute. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. No, no problem with the deadline. Yeah, our internet service connection flies now that we have OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank Mike and Brian and IT for making all of this possible as well as Helen and personnel and my great OptiLink installer. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star. Back on Catamount football, we've got assistant head coach Jim Bennett and also defensive line coach and equipment man extraordinaire. Coach Bennett, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Nice to be here. Talk a little bit about the uh, all the different responsibilities you do with the football team because you you, you have you do have an awful lot of responsibility. Um, I can I can make a list, but uh, primarily I'm the uh, I'm the equipment coach, and uh, that involves making sure the kids' helmets, shoulder pads, and everything fit. Um, and making sure it fits correctly. Uh, do a lot of laundry uh, and uh, do a lot of stuff in the off season as far as maintaining equipment and making sure you know we've got everything ordered that we need and um, staying up to date on uh, the different things that are out there available to uh, make, make it safer for our kids to play. That, that's a you know, that's kind of a short answer by you but there, there, it, it's a lot of work to get 115 guys dressed out and like you say dressed out appropriately and in the safest fashion and get them out on the field every day isn't it yes uh, it's uh, we've, we've got more kids this year than we've had in a long time uh, we've got locker space for 114 kids and we've got several of them doubled up in lockers so it's a good problem to have uh, and making sure all those kids are safely equipped is a, is a big job but I enjoy doing it interviewed you several times over the years but I always like to hear you kind of give us an update now on the on the cost what it from from head to toe, you know, what, what it kind of rounds out to be to, to outfit a guy? Probably average about between $700 and $800. And depending on the size of the kid, um, you know, it could go on up. But, uh, you know, helmets helmets are your big cost, helmets and shoulder pads. And, um, you know, that, that price continually goes up every year. You've seen the technology change a lot. Talk about what you've seen change-wise in, in, in through your years of football because it, it's really – a lot different now. Tremendously, I think you know, you can look at the two helmets down here on the floor. Um, you know, over the years, uh, you know, I told the kids a story the other day about when I played in high school, taking my helmet to the show, shoe shop uh, to have the suspension sewed back together. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, you know, the material inside the helmet um, is just so much different, and they're so much more comfortable now. Um, they've done a lot to make the helmet lighter, to make it safer, and with all this impact testing and um, you know, it's just technology is just it, it 
you know, blowing the top off the helmets. I think one thing people don't, and it's something that you'd not normally think about, but just talk a little bit about the, the change, the dry fit in the, in the jerseys and the under gear that they wear and the, and the uh, girdle pads and all that. I mean, it's made a huge difference. Tremendously, you know, uh, I, I can remember in high school and in college, you know, those old heavyweight practice jerseys and cotton. And, and I remember when mesh first became available and it was like, oh, golly. <laughs> And then now, you know, the dry fit material and the, the, the absorbent material that we have uh, and helps in coo the cooling process and, um, you know, it also helps you don't dry any of this stuff. I mean, you wash it and you hang it up and it's ready to go. So, uh, you know, everything's just so much more lightweight now. Um, it's, it's just, uh, like I said, technology and is just taken over. Absolutely. How about, now, before we let you go here, talk a little bit about your responsibilities as a defensive line coach and you work with those guys. and. We go head to head and practice quite often. So we have, we have a lot of fun at practice. <laughs> um, you know, one of my sayings is football is fun, or defense is fun. I don't know about offense, but defense is fun. But you know, we we start out fundamentally sound, and unselfish play, and then uh, no excuses. So we work fundamentally every day on certain things, and uh, you know, we feel that. Uh, you know, if we're fundamentally sound, then everything else is going to take care of itself. One thing that you guys are able to do with those defensive linemen is, is you can find different roles for them depending on the down and distance and really keep a lot of people involved and keep them fresh. Talk about that philosophy a little bit. We, uh, when we start, we tell all the kids that they've got a great opportunity to play, and, and the more kids that we can play, the better off we are. And if, if your role is, is a pass rushing specialist or, you know, we've had kids that, hey, your job is to play the trap. And uh, so we, we're able to, to rotate some kids in there and, and take advantage of their talent where some positions you really you have a hard time doing that. But uh, we were able to rotate some kids the other night and, and, and use our versatility, and I think we're just going to get better at that as the season goes along. You've even taken the crossing over some of the, some of the offensive linemen and getting those guys involved a little bit. That started happening last year towards the end of the season. And, carried on with this year, right? Well, if you look at our roster, all our big guys are on the offensive line of scrimmage. <laughs> so there are times that, uh, you know, we need some big bodies in there on defense. And uh, when those guys come over and we work with them, you know, we're telling, you know, at max, we need them maybe 10 plays a game. So, uh, you know, they understand their role. And in the same way, y'all are starting to use some of our guys defensively to learn the positions and just as, as backups. And, and, uh, and, and that helps out because you get more of that team feeling. That it's not offense, defense. You know, now they're, they're invested in both sides of the ball. So it uh, helps with chemistry a lot. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you, sir. So right here, we'll be with more Catamount football in just a minute. Just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable homestyle cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. Honesty integrity, and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. Got a hit. Here comes dinner. <laughs> I'm not eating that. There's no place like Outback for our perfectly grilled shrimp and new royal port catch. I can't believe you guys didn't catch anything. 
Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. We're back on Catamount Football Coach Land. We've got the highlights of the yep. first half of the Dalton High Ring Old game from Friday night. Well, our, our first of all, congratulations uh, to uh, Jake Roberts and Lyle Durham on being elected permanent captains. Uh, here you see Dakota Tankersley and Chipper Elrod as our, as our other two captains uh, that will be rotating in. And, you know, wonderful that the cheerleaders and the band, they do such an outstanding job on Friday night bringing us on the field and obviously playing at halftime and cheering through the game. Had a great crowd. I really appreciate all the fans that came out and got out early and got a seat. And, uh, uh, we'll start off with a, a kickoff to us, Tyler Nolan, a name you're going to hear a lot this week. Gets a great return. You see just a tough young man, puts his head down, gets all he can get, and start the ball out around the 39-yard line, if I remember right. He keeps hitting it like that, and he's going to pop one for a touchdown he will. before Absolutely. the season's over. He absolutely. You see a different angle here. Uh, like I said, just an outstanding player, great quickness, uh, and is a guy that, uh, like I said, he, he's a big play waiting to happen, and we're just going to keep working on him and giving him that opportunity. Start out with a little power play here, and um, good job by Hayden Gross pulling around, and that's Nolan, Tyler Nolan again running the football. Ended up punting on that possession. Got him pinned back pretty good, though. Yeah, at an average 38.2 yards. Uh, great job here of, uh, of Elijah. See some of our new starters here. Elijah Stidman started outside linebacker, Devontae Davis, number 37. Uh, here they're just running a little zone lead play, and uh, just a great job right here of uh, their tailback taking the ball and caught us in a two highs with the safeties and he split the middle and uh, went uh, 72 yards for a touchdown. Obviously something that you don't want to start the game out, but uh, that was the way it happened here. We have some little confusion, a little communication. Great job of Tyler recovering and once again, he just makes people miss. And great opportunity for him. Try to do something with the ball, gets the ball up around the 31 yard line. See some guys staying on their feet and staying on their blocks too. That's positive. Absolutely. Now I got Jace Chastain coming in at quarterback. Um, Peyton Veraldi had the first first series of a little veer play. Ended up having to punt on the second possession. So not starting out the first half or the first quarter like we wanted to on offense. No, no, we didn't. But we got the ball at the 17. Defense kind of pins them in there. Listen, a little zone lead. I mean, a little uh, just a little outside speed option. And uh, wonderful job there of Edward Mora and Lyle Durham, those guys. Pick up a first down and come back. And great job right here of, of Jordan Keener making the bounce. And then uh, Jay Rocco coming over the top with Jordan McKinney. Uh, and Chase Todd, great job right there getting penetration, pushing the ball outside to the tacklers. Just a great job there by those guys. So we end the first quarter, come back into the second quarter now. You see the ball is now second and ten. Just a little inside zone play, great job right there. Ewell Perez coming up and Warner Braun. Warner Braun really played a fine game for us. Little option play here and we spread it out, move it down the field. Nathan Bryant comes up, Salvador Alejandre, Chase Todd, those guys right there making a good, making a good play. Ed really did a good job of keeping contained. Yeah, come too. back with zone read and just great pursuit, great backside support right there. And that's what that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that kind of backside support coming. Come out with fourth down. They run four verticals right here and try to run right down the middle. And, we pulled off there at linebacker, and uh, they, they found the hole, but thankfully just overthrew by about 18 inches. Come back, a little option here, and Peyton Veraldi does a nice job of getting to the corner and hustling downfield. See Jake, Dakota, Jake Roberts, Dakota Tankersley down there blocking, Chris Hicks. Yeah, you really Pacheco. see that later on, how good the offensive yeah. lineman did getting down the field. Good but, job of everybody staying on their feet. Good job of Jacob Bartu there picking up another guy yeah. after his man was already block. The trap right there. Doug and Pinner just got to make him one little cut and he's going to run a long way. Yep. Uh, Juan Pacheco is on the linebacker, but Logan just man, ran into him. I'm just tall sweep. Tyler Nolan making the folks miss. Got some linemen running down. Put his head down too, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. See a ground level shot of it. Good job of Tyler getting out there running. Good job of the offensive line of blocking. Big bodies running downfield. Comes the option back this way. Veraldi does a nice job of cutting it up. Gets the ball down about the two or three yard line. Ended up kicking a field goal and had some 
uh, had some penetration. The guy came through and just tipped it. Let's come back and first down. We get a great job of penetration right here. Good job of Jordan Keener and then Chase Todd coming down, slanting into that right end of the run. And, and Coach Carpenter did a great job of calling the game the other night, putting our guys just right on the mark. Same thing again here, run the lead, come back. There's though we got to have to wrap up a little better. Great job of penetration right here, flushing him out of the pocket. But you know he's just a talented runner. He never gave you a great shot on him the whole night. I mean, that's, that's one thing. We used to have a guy named Tory Love was yep. that way. Uh, just you never got a clean shot on him. He's shifty and he moves. And like I said, I have the utmost respect for this quarterback. He really did a fine job. Come back and just a little quarterback draw action here. Warner Braun comes up and, you know, he drags us for two or three yards. Once again, a good stop by our defense there. Brings the punt team on at fourth and one. Get a good snap right here. Really wanted a returnable ball, but this is a short punt. So we'll turn the ball over at the 39. Good job by Tyler up there to get that in field in it. Here's a little delay to the tight end. Nice job of Chase Westfall. He's a guy we've got to get the ball to uh, more often. He is a real, he's a great blocker, but he's also a really good receiver. I love watching play. his legs, yeah. Keeps those things going all the time, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. And here comes a nice play. Nice job by Jake Roberts of coming around. Great block Peter there. Sigma downfield. Peter Sigma. There's our young fella, Zeke, fighting, blocking downfield. That's a great job. Great <laughs> job. Get a re I'm sure got a replay here. Watch uh, 69 come around the corner. Find him right there and pins the linebacker. Right, here's Peter Sigmund yeah. right there. And there's Zeke. Zeke yeah, Cobb on the block there. Backside receiver, Tyler Britton. Good also job. good job by Evan Stewart and Andrew Williams at the point of attack. Absolutely. Those guys did a nice job of opening the hole. Come back with quarterback drawing. Chase does a good job. Chase does a good job right there, lowering his head down, picking up some tough yards. Picking up first down. Or oh, I'm sorry, getting close to first down. Wyatt Irwin coming in there getting after somebody. Yep, Wyatt Irwin. So fourth and five, little rollout play. Good thing about Chase is, you know, weighing 190 pounds, he can, he can put his shoulder down and pick up some tough yards for you. He, he did a nice job of leading right there. Good block here on the corner, though, by Jake. You know, that number nine right there, you just can't underestimate how big he is. He's about six foot five. Um, 250, 260. 250, he's, a big, he's a big kid, big yeah, load. Yeah, big load, big load. Good job by Jason. A little option play there and just takes the ball into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, we had a little trouble figuring out who scored on that. We, <laughs> the that ball was, right was between two of them. That yeah. was basically the last play of the last first half. Last play of the first half, exactly right. Come on for the extra point now. Got these looks like on the sidelines. See uh, Jake Roberts and Hayden Gross making a nice double team block there, really opening up some space. Yeah, just a great job there. Great job by our guys. So we come on here and kick a field goal to go out, finish out basically the last play of the half. Good job there. Good blocking, good Grant Sane and Nathan Bryan are snapping and holding combination. Be back with the second half highlights in just a minute. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs. All backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com.
Coach Lane, we're back with the second half highlights. This includes the second half and the three overtimes. I don't <laughs> yeah. know if we've ever played three overtimes no, before. No, not, not in my recollection. I can't remember. Great job of Pepe here kicking off, literally kicking it out of the end zone. Not into the end zone, but out of the end zone. That's just a great thing you like to see. Mm -hmm. Come back here with a little zone option, and uh, great job of, of Elijah Stedman taking out the, uh, the pitch man. I'm sorry, Edder taking out the pitch man and forcing the quarterback to keep it. Great backside support there by uh, Lyle Durham coming in there. This was really a good start by the defense. For the it Saints. really was. We challenged them at halftime, told them that we needed to go three and out. That needed to be our challenge. And we pretty much shut them out until the last drive, which that's part of an, you know, we All just right. got to mature. I mean, we just got to, we got to finish strong. Got to finish strong. Great job here of, of, of Jordan McKinney. Uh, allowing him just enough space to invite the quarterback to throw the pass and then have enough athleticism to be able to step in and, and really, uh, you know, swat down and, and, and really thought he was going to have an interception there, we thought. Uh, you know, Jordan's one of those guys who's got a great vertical. Come back and they kick out of here. It's a high short kick again. We're not really able to get a good return. Uh, they get a favorable bounce, pick up about 20, 22 yards on the bounce, and uh, we'll start the ball at the 28. So that was a sweep again. Look at Jake. Robert's doing an excellent job there, uh, really just setting the corner for us on the toss and the code tank really pulling out in front of it. Good job by Tyler Nolan and come back with a little quick pass here to Zeke Cobb. That's somebody you're going to see with the ball in his hands a lot more as the year goes on. A lot more. Young Absolutely. fella getting used to varsity speed and, and, and how he has to play every time, but that's a little glimpse right there of what he's got. And, and you'll see a lot more of him as the season uh, progresses. Yep. Yeah, he's an exciting ball player. He's obviously somebody that's going to be, uh, you know, going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of balls over these next four years. Exciting to have a freshman with that kind of potential. It's been a long time since we've had one with that kind of potential. So it'll be interesting to see just exactly he evolves this year. Great run by Peyton Veraldi here. He did. You don't think of him as a as a great runner, but he he's really he's really pretty shifty. I mean, you watch some of the moves he makes here, right here, uh, kind of wiggles away from that guy, make, makes the safety fall down, and gains about another eight or ten yards after that move. And I recall this was like second and 22, wasn't it? I well, mean, this was, was a a one run. of our longer downs. Yep. Comes following the fullback into the end zone for a touchdown. Good job of blocking over there on the left side of the line. Those guys did a good job all night. You know, we had great push all night long. I mean, truly, we, we probably surprised ourselves. I think it was a comment made today as a coaching staff when we were watching it, just how far we knocked some of those guys uh, back at times. I would have yeah, <laughs> bet Dolph's Donuts and got jumped, but when you go back and you really watch it on film, it, it, was, it was a legal move. Yeah. Great job of, uh, of Pepe right there, putting it about seven yards in the end zone and right on the corner, right where we want it. Great job right there of, of, of Edder. Edder's become such a, a natural at that play, sitting that, kind of baiting that, and, and, and trying to, you know, when he opens up and sees that angle, he's really got that down. So come back with a little counter action here. And, Good job of our guy stepping up in there, making him run back up into the gut and cut it back. Come back and run a little zone play. Great, get a bounce there, penetration by our, our inside guys and flushes it obviously to the guys that you won't make in the tackles. Once again, you see it right there, Jordan Keener. We, we made a joke about how his pants were dirty. He spent a lot of time with his butt, but the reason being was he was taking those double teams and the slicing the gaps. So good job here of, of just a quarterback keeper and. You know, our guys, you know, you know who's going, you know who wants the ball in his hand. Come back and, and Nathan Bryant right here, perfect timing on a pass. A little bit high, should have made the catch, but great job of uh, our DBs there stepping up and, and uh, separating the, the receiver from the ball. Obviously a catchable pass, so great job of, of Nathan Bryant there on that play. And obviously that was a, sets up a big down, fourth down, fourth and nine. <clears throat> You know, really, this in their offense, they're, they're comfortable in this down right here. So they come back, and, and uh, we bring a little outside blitz, try to get a little pressure. They want to go down the middle, and, uh, you know, that's one of those plays right there. Had he caught that ball, it could have potentially been ruled as a touchdown. It would have been left to interpretation. Uh, but uh, once again, that's one of those things that's one of the new rules, rules this year. Well, this is something you can't have, and you get a big play by your defense and then turn right around and fumble the football and, and hand it back to the other team. That's such a – just a mental uh, letdown for, for the defense after making doing what they did. You put them back in a tough position. Absolutely. But a wonderful job right here. Jordan McKinney making one of his two interceptions on the night. Gets a great break 
Uh, the, the defense had came right back out on the field, and, and obviously they were tired, drove the field on us. And Jordan comes up with a, no, just a tremendously big play. You'll see this right here. He lets the receiver break on out. He t rotates his body and uh, steps up right up into the pass. Just a great job by Jordan McKinney. And probably muscling the ball away a little bit as well. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great job of breaking on the football. We end up getting a kick tipped right we'll miss, here. We mishandled the snap, and that was one of the things. You know, this is a – you got about 1.4 to 1.5 seconds to get the ball off, and we were right at 1.47 on that. So, good job of Ural Perez. Ural's a young guy that's stepping in for us. You see right there, just that's that fundamentals that Jim Bennett, Coach Bennett was talking about. He squeezed, realized the quarterback was going outside, redirected his steps. So, just a great job there. Good job here of Edder. You see he's wanting to throw that pass. Edder steps in front, comes back, and throws it. Uh, you know, we'd let a guy kind of sit in the middle. Scramble drill is always a tough thing to do. So they come back and run the quarterback sneak, and once again, I mean, a quarterback uh, uh, draw, and, you know, he's just a guy that he, he's going to find the end zone. Real close thing there where, where Edder went down to make the catch and actually almost put his knee down. So that's something we really got to work on this week as well. Got a good bounce right there, though. You know, at this point, I think, uh, you know, both teams are, are realizing this is going to be one of those long games. And uh, Jordan McKinney does just a great job there of, of making his second in, uh, interception. You know, obviously, and, and that's a other, another young guy. That's a sophomore right. starting at corner for us. So uh, it's exciting to see him get an opportunity to make big plays. Chase Todd coming around, about to get some heat on the quarterback right there. You see, uh, missed him coming in the picture. Yeah, great, great play right there. Great play right there. Get the ball back and get a pop a long run here, uh, power play. Look at Jake Roberts hustling down the Outstanding field. Outstanding job right here by just, Jake. Just, he gets called for a block in the back right there. It's close. It, just As an offensive lineman, I talked to him after the game. You just can't ever touch anybody behind the runner. Just can't take now a you really, That's a good point. You really can't. Just, I mean, just don't do it. Yeah, it's, not, it's just not worth it. Because that 34 is not going to catch Tyler anyway. No. So it ended up, instead of having the ball at the, about the 19-yard line, we ended up with the ball back at midfield. Uh, run a couple of plays here. God, that's Chastain back there, tailback now. Tyler got rolled up a little bit. Good job by Juan Pacheco on the, on the toss right there. So we're moving the ball, trying to, trying to get back down in the scoring position. It's getting kind of late in the game. There's no one back in there again after that long run. Ended up having to punt. And once again, a great job by uh, uh, Edder of getting the ball downfield. And you know, they are down there to field it. Great job of Grant Sane as well, being patient, letting the ball roll down. So now we go into our first overtime. Uh, you know, as the rules are stated, when you go into overtime, um, what, you're going to take the ball, put the ball on the 15, uh, and you'll have one timeout per series. You flip, one chooses who wants the ball first, one flips, to, you know, and the, the loser chooses the, the, the goal line that they want to defend. And then the third overtime you have to go for two. Okay. That's right. Once you go through the first two, the third one you're going to have to go for two as opposed to kicking. Great job of Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts comes in and gives us about 10 to 12 plays a game on defense. And, uh, you know, Jake brings some excitement, but he also brings intelligence and experience. He's really a good football player. Got big Andrew Williams in there, too, the yep. right tackle for us. That's exactly right. Juan Pacheco came over and took some snaps. A <laughs> little different look when those guys so, come over there. Well, we had them right here and just good, yeah, good this, play by them to let them out. It was. Good good job there. But, you know, this is one of those plays right here you look at and, you know, you really would like to – this is where you'd like to be caught. You'd like to be high – I mean, big pros. Looks here like it's a fumble. Looks like the ball's coming out prior to going in. Um, you know, but obviously you don't have that. And, and, you know, those guys, I thought they did an outstanding job. The officials, they were consistent. And, you know, when you're using the human eye, that's the best. It's a great football play right here by, by uh, Peyton really Viraldi. Uh, great job of Peter Sigmund coming back there and making that key block, allowing Tyler to get out there and pick up the first down. Coming back the other way with a rollout. Peyton does a nice decision, tucks it down. Look at that effort. Great job. Reminds me of the old Dan, uh, John Elway. John helicopter. Elway play the helicopter play. Helicopter That's right. Play. Yeah, great view it. of it right here. Great view of it right here. Just a great effort. There's Jacob Barkey downfield and you see Peyton selling out. Great job. Great job. That's somebody that's not worried about his body that's just going to sell out for the team. Absolutely. Here's a toss. There's Chase Westfall making a great block and really 
Great Ryan job, Jay. Yeah. Chastain just runs right up underneath us for the touchdown. Yeah. Jason's a very talented young man that has the ability to help us in a lot of different ways. Right there's a prime example. Yeah, you know, 190 pound tailback is a is a nice option to have. Good snap, good hold, get the ball down, good job. So now it's 21 all, and and with the overtime rules now we go right back on offense. That's correct. Uh, after that possession, so here we come back with the toss sweep again to Jace. Get it down there to Raldi on the on the option, falling in for a touchdown. Good job by the left side of the line blocking, right side. Guys on the back side, replay of it here. Nice double team block by Hayden Gross and, and Jake. It really opened the door there for Hayden to get in the end zone. You're going to see the extra point uh, gets blocked. So now that puts us in a precarious position. <laughs> we're, yeah, it we're, does. We're up by six, and, and they've got the ball. Yeah. Once again, a great job right here of uh, our guys stepping in there and holding them. You see right here, good penetration by Euro Perez. Our defense steps up right here. Edder, you know, Edder, Edder was probably in on one out of every three tackles uh, for after that. Great job right here of, of, of Jace, I mean, of Chase Todd being able to contain him. Comes back here, and uh, a lot of people will know about this. It was a flag thrown, and the flag was thrown due to the fact that it was a pass, and they had an illegal receiver downfield, which basically means the line was downfield. However, it gets wiped away since it turns into a run as opposed to a pass. And here we, you know, we saw something the first couple and come back and put in our own little, we call timeout there, and put in a little block that we had and uh, was able to get the block and send it basically into our third overtime, 27-27 here. So now it comes back and, and now Ringold goes right back on offense on the, on the alternating possession. Good job by, that's Devontae Davis getting there and blocking that kick. Great job by Devontae. Yeah, great job. Devontae's a guy that's got tremendous speed. He really does. He's a guy that's going to be a, a very uh, exciting player to watch throughout this year. Very exciting. Good to see the kids get excited after Absolutely, big play like man. That. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing so now we're wrong in the third that. overtime. Marine hold back on offense. Yep. So now here we come back and once again just getting another scramble drill and, and you know, once again, this guy is just so shifty. I mean, he's so shifty, and, you know, he sets this play up perfectly and just basically runs just a quarterback sneak for a gun play and uh, is able to get it on just a great push by their, their guys just wedge block in, and, you know, you only got one or two guys there, and he just steps up and comes in. Run a two-point play and just a good job of Aaron Moore there, uh, stepping in front of that pass and guarding uh, their their, uh, their halfback. Got a little roll out here. They got the receivers co covered, and, uh, Peyton does a good job of just making a good decision, pulls it down. Toss sweep here, and, and that's been the best play for us all night. And just ended up uh, not tucking away the, the pitch there. And yeah, felt comfortable that the was there for us, absolutely. So Once again, the boys fought hard, and uh, you, know, you hate to see one end that way, but uh, nothing but uh, uh, nothing but the good things out of some of those young guys. Wood, 299. Wood, 159. Set. Mike Jones here, and you better bliss to Carpet Express. We have three-quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last, because everybody's out to get their quarterback. When you're done. Back on Catamount football with the scouting report for the coming up uh, here in two weeks with the mm -hmm. Calhoun Yellow Jackets. Coach, fine football team, and, and they've had a, they've had a lot of good things happening for them in the last four or five years. Well, absolutely. You know, we, we have here the utmost respect for Coach Lamb, Calhoun program. It has been a very successful program over the over the last four or five years. Uh, obviously, uh, the opportunity to play four to five additional games per year. Uh, is a tremendous benefit from a coaching standpoint. I mean, it's literally like having four weeks of spring practice. 
um, you know, five weeks. And uh, so this is a team that we will see that is a good team that every year gets better the more games they play. Uh, and obviously looking at the season, the way their seasons have laid out, they've played a lot of teams, I think, that have helped make them very multidimensional. Uh, they have great talent in the throwing capacity. Uh, they have the great, uh, you know, runners each year. Uh, but, you know, you and I uh, obviously spend probably as much time looking at their defense. Absolutely. And while their offense, obviously because of their prowess, has, has gotten a lot of attention, the reality is the defense may have been the best parts of those programs over the years. Oh, I think uh, so. They, they've, been a, they've been a real challenge. And, you know, they've kind of – they run a unique – scheme it was not as unique as it used to be because of their success right i think a lot of teams in our area are starting to look at that defense and sure. and, and go that way but that three five stack defense it gives them a lot of options as far as bringing folks from different places and uh they've, they've been blessed with linebackers that can run uh, and it makes it a challenge you know as offensive linemen trying to pin those guys down and, and figure out where they're going to be and get your hats in the right place to block them. Well, it's definitely a defense, and you and I both are familiar with the way that the defense got its start. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a Tony Franklin-type offense. It, it, has a, it has an origin of where it came from. And if you look back at how that defense was designed over the years, uh, it was teams that had more linebackers and athletes than they had size on the interior line. And, uh, you know, and, and that truly probably is a good representation of, of, of the way Calhoun, uh, which is why it just perfectly fit in your system. That's what we are seeing probably across the nation now. You're seeing more athletes, more larger frames that can run better and all that kind of stuff. So that defense is more of an athletic-minded defense as opposed to that pure old, what we remember, Americas or Cedartown or right. uh, type defense that was just a five-man front, and they just stopped everything that – you know, literally, it was just a wall. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be moving forward, looking at this team now, getting into their film, getting into breakdown. Obviously, we have two weeks to prepare for them. Uh, you know, they've not played a, a, an opening game yet. They'll play this week against Ridgeland, um, at Ridgeland. So I think that'll be a good test to kind of see what their, uh, you know, what their, their theology is going to be this year. Because as your personnel changes, obviously your theology is going to change. And so I think that you're going to see that this year. Uh, with, with having a new quarterback, I think that's going to be something that's an interesting opportunity for them to see what this, this new quarterback's, uh, what his skill set is. And I'm confident that Coach, uh, you know, Coach Davis and, and Coach Lamb, they're, they're going to they're gonna find that skill set and they'll maximize that to most of their abilities. You know, the other thing about them, if you've, if you've been paying attention to this series, they've been clo it's been close games within the last four or five years, or yeah. really since we've been playing them the last seven or eight years. Um, but it's been interesting to see they've kind of developed a little hotbed of kickers down there too. They've Absolutely. sent they've sent three or four. I mean they've got one at Alabama, Georgia yep. Tech, yep. Georgia. Yep. I mean they've got them. You know they've got kickers and snappers around scattered around yep. different places. Well, you know I I, I like to, to put us as as a school that kind of has the same philosophy that they do, and that is special teams is not just a phase. It's something you concentrate on, and clearly they spend a lot of time on special teams and and. You know, the, one of the, the hallmarks of a good special teams program is good kickers. Right. And they have sure had some fine kickers there, you know, from, I mean, I can think back to the year that the kid kicked the ball, literally kicking off, put it through the uprights, right. and there wasn't a penalty. Right. <laughs> I mean, he did that from the right. 40, it wasn't right. like he did from the So, you know, the, you just got to realize that this is going to be a total team. It's going to be a team that's going to have a good offense. They're going to have a good defense. They're going to have a good special team. They're not going to take any phases off. And you're going to, we're going to have to be prepared across the board in all phases for us to be competitive and for us to win that game. We're going to have to do all those things and do them well. And I think that's the challenge for us. It's a great robbery. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I know our fans uh, enjoy going down there. Look forward to a, a big Catamount crowd. Uh, down there in the visiting stands at Calhoun, you know, that, you know they'll have a big crowd, so it's it's always a fun atmosphere. Absolutely, I mean, you know, like I said, it, it, there's a lot of similarities in our programs, and I, I think that's one of the things. You know, when you when you play Calhoun, I know they say the same thing about playing Dalton. Nobody's going to do anything different. You know, we know what they're going to do. They know what we're going to do, and it comes down to the players on the field. And I don't know if that's not the most enjoyable games because nobody's winning it with trickeration and and with gadgets and gadgets. You're winning it because that guy is beating the guy in front of him. And like I said, it sets up to be a great game. Hope to see a lot of fans out. Uh, obviously, it's one to be at their stadium, so be sure you leave early. I know parking's a a little bit of a challenge down there around that area, so be sure you. Uh, 
It'll be sure you get out early enough to be sure you get a good parking space and get the game on time for kickoff. Absolutely. Look forward to having anyone, everyone down there. So right here back with more Cat and Mouth Football in just a minute. A restaurant should be more than just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable homestyle cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. Honesty integrity, and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. Coach Lane, we've come to the end of the first show here and, and uh, certainly want to uh, let you thank the folks that made this first home game mm -hmm. uh, possible. A lot of support, a lot of turnout. We had a great crowd. Uh, it was an exciting night. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you cannot uh, ever, ever not thank our quarterback club enough, not just for, for, for providing the TV show, but, but really the catamount experience for our kids. Uh, everything from, from, you know, from pregame meal to, uh, you know, Popsicle Tuesday to, to everything. Our quarterback club does an outstanding job. Our century club, the fundraising arm. I want to really encourage uh, fans and, and corporate sponsors, if you'd like to still be a part of that program. I know they're still there. Contact Alan Felker uh, or uh, uh, Doug Gross, either one of those gentlemen, and they'd be glad to continue to, to, to hook you up with our program. But, yeah, and, you know, and then the moms that, uh, uh, that are – and, you know, critical to the spaghetti suffers and, and all the things that they do for the seniors and, and that kind of stuff and the cut-ups and all that. And, and then really, you know, the, 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 the group that comes over on Friday and sets up for the tailgate experience, uh, you know, I, I get calls. In fact, we were doing a special last week for uh, uh, Fox 5, and, and one of the, the, the very two, one or two things that they asked right off the bat was, Coach, tell us about your pregame, your tailgate experience, that we hear about it all the time. And so, you know, my hat's off to those quarterback club members and moms and dads that come over here early and, and get started. And they got everything from flags out to barbecue grilling to, to, to you know, to, to floats Absolutely. blowing up and all that and uh, setting waters out for the teams. And we couldn't do it. We, we really couldn't do it without, uh, without those people. And, uh, you know, there's too many to, to begin to name names. But, uh, once again, we really appreciate all they do. And I uh, appreciate Brandon Brown for, for the, the, obviously, the video and, and for what we get as far as Friday night. And, you know, that's a great company here that, that uh, uh, not just sponsors don't, but does a lot for our community. And so I just want to tell those people, thank you for what they do. It's a big week coming up and just looking forward to, to us getting it going and uh, getting, getting in the year, get that rhythm and seeing everybody week to week here on the TV show. Absolutely. And that, let's close it up like we always do. We say we'll be back in two weeks. Same cat time, same cat channel. Go Big Red. <laughs>